Mr. Ray, you are in court to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Lacey, that he is the biological father of your adult son, Trayvon Lacey. You state that the defendant has been an absentee father full of excuses and you want it all to end today in court with the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Tell the court. Well, it's not fair to my son and he he really needs to uh, man up because um, he's depriving my child of a father. He is the father of my son. And so you believe that you are not Trayvon's biological father. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You believe that from the beginning? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so did you sign the birth certificate? No, Your Honor. Yes, he did, Your Honor. Your Honor, I could not Your have Honor, signed Your Honor, I got proof today that he did sign the, the birth certificate and his ni- name is on my son. I'd like birth... to see that proof. Jerome? Your Honor, I could not have signed the birth certificate. I was not, uh, I was incarcerated at the time Trayvon was Thank born. Thank you. So this birth certificate, child's name, Trayvon Lacey's father's name, Larry Lacey. But it's typed in. Mm-hmm. Was he present at the birth? He was not present, no. You basically just gave them his name. I gave him his name because... And they typed it in? Yes. So, Mr. Lacey, when did you find out that she claimed you were Trayvon's biological father? Uh, I say Trayvon probably was about between three and six months years old. I received a court paper to go to... uh, the state of Ohio uh, child support court. And uh, me and Ms. Torre, we did both appear at the child support court. When I walked into the court, the judge, he looked at me, he said, this your son, you know, you, you have nothing to say. That's not true, Your Honor. They gave him an opportunity for a DNA. No, they if he did had not, any Your doubt that my, uh, my son was not no, his child, not, Your Honor. Hamilton County gave him a window of an opportunity to say yes or nay, I want a DNA. He said, no, it's my son. We went forth with the child support case. You don't remember any of that happening? No, ma'am. Yes, he That's does. not the way I remember it happening, Your Honor. Okay. But he's on the birth certificate. He is. So he is the legal father. Yes. As far and as his court saying. papers say he's paying child support. You, yes. You pay child I have, support. I have proof that, Diana. Let uh, me see that. There you go. But, Your Honor, I want to put this to bed. I'm tired of reliving this. You know, okay, I made a mistake. It wasn't even a mistake. I was just living mm-hmm. on my own. Uh, and I, he just keep throwing his man in my face over and making my son feel bad. I, 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 I'm ready to put it to bed. That's what I want to do and get on with our life. Right. Your Honor, my intention is not to make Trayvon feel bad, nor is my intention to make Mr. Torre feel bad. Only thing I want to know is the truth. Sounds like, as we stand here today, that there is, in fact, a question of... a real question of paternity that both sides acknowledge. Uh, you presented this evidence to the court, which indicates that you... You owe $37,200 and some odd dollars in child mm-hmm. support, which you have... Knock you down to $5,000. You've got about 5000 $800, it's past due. You've paid all of that. So throughout these years, you've paid... I've been paying off and on. You know, sometimes during them years, I was unemployed. As soon as I find um, employment again, then, you know, my wages start being garnished. But you've again. managed to pay that 37000 down to almost 5000 Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're getting it done. And the only thing that Ms. Torre have told me is this, because I asked her about the other gentleman, and she told me that she went to the other gentleman and she spoke to that gentleman, and the gentleman told her, no, Trayvon is not his child because he do not look like any of his other children, and Ms. Torre accepted that. So, now, let me understand. Who who is this other? I don't know the gentleman's name, but he is the gentleman when when, uh, me and Ms. uh, Torre was first got together. I left. I had to leave and go out of town. Okay, take me back to that, how you met. You you met... Okay, I met Miss Torre. Uh, I was on the city bus, and she was on the city bus, and uh, she had her oldest son to walk up to me and give me a piece of paper with a phone number on it. Okay? <laughs> so when I looked at I know the phone like. number, when I looked at the phone number, I'm wondering, who is this? So I turn around, and I'm watching where the, you know, child goes. The child went back, and he sat next to you know, Miss Torre, I looked at her and said, mm, nice looking young lady. You know, maybe we can get together. You know? And so, Miss Torre, you don't remember sending your son up with the phone number? Your Honor, yes, I do remember okay. meeting Mr. Lacey. And partially that is true. Um, the thing is, 
I found him very attractive and very charming. Yes, I did, and I did approach him because I like what I, has, I saw. So we, we, the chemistry, once we started talking, the chemistry was good. And um, he decided to move in with me. Well, at this time, my first time I, I had sex with Mr. Lacey, he got me pregnant, but I didn't know it at the time. So Mr. Lacey, told me he left and went out of town, he just disappeared, Your Honor. He disappeared, I don't know where he went, but later on down the road, as time revealed, he was, he was living a double life. It was another woman in the neighborhood that he had left me for. So at that time, I thought, you know, it was over. So wait a minute, you all in this relationship, everything's going fine, then you come back home and Mr. Lacey is gone? No, Mr. Lacey had sex with me and took off. Oh, so after he had he sex, had he sex left. He had sex with me and took off. I didn't see him for a long time after that. Yeah. That's Wait, not I me and this other guy got, got together. I thought you Your said Honor. he moved in. Yes, he did. That was after the fact. He came back and caught the guy at my house. So, Mr. Lacey, tell me what happened with this guy. Okay, Your Honor. I had to go out of town and take care of some family business for a week. When I came back into town, I knock on the door, you know, and the door opened. Well, I see my pajamas. My pajamas. Oh. Ms. Ms. That Torre is not true. has on the pajama top. That is not true to me. The That's gentleman has on the pajama bottom. Your pajamas. Uh, my pajamas. I didn't argue. I didn't fuss. <laughs> I didn't create no drama. I didn't fight. I didn't do anything. I turned around. I tell my cousin. I said, "Come on, let's go." So we left. So do you remember this incident with the pajamas, Ms. Torre? He is straight lying. I'm telling you, Your Honor. When he came and knocked on my door, I answered the door and, and my new friend came to the door with me. He did not, he didn't have, he had on his own clothes, first of all. He had on a pair of pants, he didn't have on a he shirt. Had on pajama pants. He didn't have on pajamas, a shirt. It was blue. But he did and have his had own on clothes the blue on. Top. And I had my clothes on. No, you okay, did not. so pajamas or no pajamas? Were you intimate with this guy? You said it's your new friend. I was intimate, yes. I just moved in town. I got my new apartment. I was feeling all grown in my apartment, doing grown mm -hmm. stuff in my grown, uh, mm -hmm. grown you apartment. You sure were. You yes, sure I were. <laughs> How soon after he walks in on you and Pajama Man did you find out you were pregnant? Well, I didn't find out until I went to the OBGYN. And I, at that time, he, had, he told me that I was like 12 to 14 weeks already into my pregnancy. Really? And he was the only man I had had sex at, in that time frame. Because I didn't have any, 12, I didn't know nobody else. She was pregnant, and we had only been together for no more than a month. How could Trayvon be my child? Because DNA gonna tell you it's your child. <laughs> we wasn't, we were just having sex. Well, I get that. Unprotected, I guess. Of yes, course. So. Rubber in hand and peels another one. <laughs> it just happened that way. <laughs> <sighs> so, how. Soon after that, were you... Did you transition to Pajama Guy? About two about weeks three, after. About, yeah, maybe about two or three weeks. I, about two or three weeks? I already weeks. had eyes on him, but I ran into Larry, <laughs> and I started talking to him. Miss Toure, you was on Team Too Much back then. What? You was on Team Too Much back then. I you had eyes on much. one? We live and we learn. And I'm, I'm not saying too you... much now, though, but good. at that time, yes, I was. Good. Good, good, I good. was in it to win it. I'm new. I was new at town. I had my own place. Yeah, you, you, you was on team too much. You're Trayvon, right. I haven't heard from you yet. You've been very quiet <laughs> listening to this testimony, and I know some of it's probably difficult, son. Do you have something you'd like to say to the court? Um, yes, I, I want to start off by, by saying my mom, you know, she was, you know, an excellent mother. Um, she raised three boys by herself. Um, all at different ages. So I want to give her, you know, uh, kudos for that. You know, I believe I, I didn't turned out okay. Um, I have... <laughs> um, I also want to go on to say that, you know, Larry's absence in my life, it definitely affected me in a negative way. Growing up, it was tough. You know, I, I started having sex at a young age. I just wish if I had a father there, he could have pointed me in the right direction. Um, Talk to Mr. Lacey about specifically how this affected you growing up, not having him in your life. Um, Larry, I believe, you know, growing up with my mom, you know, there's a lot of things that I wish you could have been there with, you know, as far as her having to be my father as well as my mother. I feel like if you were there, it was a lot of, you know, heartache and headaches that I could have avoided. 
Um, as far as my children, which I believe are your grandchildren, um, they have a right to know who their grandfather is. True. You know, so I want to I want to I want to let you know that. And uh, I'm just ready to get these results so we can move forward in our lives. When you hear that, Mr. Lacey, how do you feel? It makes me feel good and it also makes me feel a little sad, you know, because during the time that I wanted to be in Trayvon's life, Kadisha didn't want me around. I never had hatred toward Kadisha for what she done. Only thing I, I, I disagreed with Ms. Torre on was not allowing me to be closer as I wanted to be. Ms. Torre, did you keep Mr. Lacey away from the boys? Absolutely not. A lot of times it was the relationships Absolutely that she not. was I'm in a, and the things that she was doing in her life. No, I think exactly. the whole thing in a nutshell, he's just trying to get now, out child support payment. Now. Well, this, I mean, he done paid it now, so, right. it, it, so, so now if this that's is true. <laughs> he's not getting that money back. That's so right. that's not a motive right now. That's, that's, that's irrelevant. He probably doesn't know that, though. That's irrelevant. When we started the case, it was your testimony you believe he is Trevon's biological father. But through the testimony, it has been revealed to me that you acknowledge and recognize that there is a real doubt and a reason behind that doubt. Because you engaged in sexual activity with another person. Right. Is this the first time you ever honest with Trevon about the fact that you really do understand? And you say yes, Trevon. Yes. You, this is the first time in court today that you've heard your mother acknowledge that there really could be a doubt as to whether or not Mr. Lacey... And it's Lacey... also the first yes. time I heard this, man. He when, is lying. So when when wait, Ms. But... Torre told, came from, from the doctor and she told me that she was pregnant, you know, I asked Torre, I said, is it mine or is it the other guy's? She told me, she said, it's yours. So I, I rolled with the punches. And these are how paternity seek they affect the individual. We're gonna go to the results in just a moment. But Trevon, I think it's important today for you to share with your mom and your, the man you believe is your dad, what's going through your mind right now, now that you have the whole story? Right. Um, I have three children of my own. Um, because of what I've went through growing up as a kid, as far as not having a father, I, I have vowed to always be in my children's life. If the results come out that he is my father, you know, I want him in my life. I want him in my children's life. You know, we deserve that. You know, and if he isn't, then, you know, I'm, we, we have to move on and find out who is. If, in fact, he's not your biological father, do you want to seek out this other man? Definitely. You do? Definitely. My, chi my, my children deserve to know who their father, yes, they uh, grandfather are. Mom, do you know where this other man is? I have no idea where he is, but um, he's aware that I was pregnant and Larry came back and all that. Okay. And he, he's given me pictures, you know, just in case this situation came out where the DNA say he is the father, he would be interested in getting back into my son's life. You didn't know any of that was going on, did you? No, ma'am. And I'm sorry for that, son. I should have told you. I'm ready for the results, Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Toure versus Lacey, when it comes to 25-year-old Trevon Lacey, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Lacey, you are the father. Yes. Thank you, your honor. I told you. Mm -hmm. I told you. Now stand up, give my son his respect. Give him his, his father, give him his father. Hug your daddy. How does it feel, Trevon? Um, it's exhilarating. I want to thank you for bringing out these results and, you know, hopefully that we can move forward with our lives. I have nothing to say. Cold as ice. You talked this whole case. Why? I'll contact Trayvon at a later date, and I'll discuss with him and me and him get, make plans to get together or whatever. But at this moment, I just have not much to say. Look, this is what paternity secrets do. They rob people of their joy. They rob mm -hmm. people of their family. He just got robbed of another moment. And I don't like it. And you know why he got robbed? 
because of that chapter you left out. You're right. We're in paternity court, but some days it's maternity court too because it is both parents yep. that cause these children to go without and to be robbed. It bugs me that when I said you are the father, that you stood still like that and never looked over at your son. That bugs me. I, 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 I'm, I'm upset. Miss Bailey. Yes, ma'am. You state you've brought your ex-husband, Mr. Green, to court to prove he is the biological father of your nine-month-old son, Lawrence. Yes, Your Honor. Though you freely admit to sleeping with multiple men during the time of conception, you say you believe the defendant is your child's father because you kept an ovulation calendar and you've narrowed it down to him. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Green, you say you've always had unprotected sex with Ms. Bailey and yet she never got pregnant. That's true, Your Honor. Now, all of a sudden, she claims you somehow fathered her child. Yes, Your Honor. You argue you are 100% certain you are not her child's father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Green, what makes you so certain this is not your child? Well, we went on a four-month drought, and um, the first time I had seen her in four months, she already had a little pudge, a little pouch, like she already looked pregnant. Your I... Honor, I always had a stomach. Obviously, I still have a stomach, and I'm not pregnant now. <laughs> All right. So, let's state as fact that you're beautiful just the way you Thank are. Thank you. And, Mr. Green, I'd like to hear you please explain to this court, why are you so sure? She also admitted that she had been with somebody in February, right before she had sex Yes, Your Honor, I, I was supposed to have been in a relationship, which he left me, which he did the same thing, and it was, like, two, three weeks before me and... Mr. Green even slept back together. I had a cycle and everything. All right, so I, I want to understand this. Somebody got to take me back. All right. You all married. Very six fast, months. very fast. Shouldn't have been married. Six months. You were married for six months. No, we wasn't, Your Honor. No. We was together about seven months. We, was, we dated for six months. We got we married. Got, we were together we for three for months, months. And she went missing for a whole year. I tried to get a divorce. I tried to get when a divorce. When did you... Look, when I did tried I go to get missing? a divorce. I, I tried to get missing. a divorce. We stayed in lawyer... contact to this day. No. We had sex to this no. day. No, no, We're still having that sex. Is... Our last time having sex was in April. In April. We still, to this day, even if I wanted him, I can get him. So, Listen, therefore... No. No, 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 no. There is missing. no getting me. Look, I never Honor, went missing a no, year no, 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 afterwards. No. You're not gonna sit in this courtroom he, and he just talk and talk was. like he that. Look. All right, let's was. let's get some order because I want to understand your story. So I'm trying to understand this relationship. How it got to the point that you were sleeping together, but you were also admittedly sleeping with other people during the time. So much so that you don't know who the father of your child is. Those are the facts I need. The rest of this, yes, Your Honor, is irrelevant to me. Okay. So, at the time you got together, you were divorced, right? Yes, right. Honor. We got a divorce uh, March 25th, and we was together April the 1st. That, no, we wasn't, Your Honor. All right. I, not, I even went to, man, I even I went to Albany with him over his family. So, the house. bottom line is, after your divorce, you all were still sleeping together. Yes, we were. Two times. And... More than twice. And... Two times. More than twice. Mm -hmm. Two more yes. people. And two other people. Yes, Your Honor. Admittedly so. Mm -hmm. All during the window of conception. Like, <laughs> yes, the Your same Honor. month, but not the same windows of conception. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when you find out you're pregnant, you tell Mr. Green? Yes, I told him. I asked him if I found out I was pregnant, would he believe that it was his child? And he told me yes. Y Your Honor, she disappeared. How he could she talk to somebody yes. when she wasn't around? She was gone for five months. Your she Honor, if I told him I was pregnant until still she was went five with and a half months pregnant. In March. No. After I did I not told him see I was pregnant. Her I was, anymore. And then I went with him again when I was three months pregnant to his house. So that was what? Three times after I told him I was okay, pregnant. Okay, so when she tells you she's pregnant, Mr. Green, what was your response? It ain't mine. It can't be mine. Like, she moved to Alabama. Like, sex can't go on from Georgia to Alabama. Uh, <laughs> and, and she, like I said, like, uh, she already had admitted to me to two guys prior. Like, in February, Your you already had sex with two other guys. You came to visit me in Alabama when and I was seven added, months pregnant. You were seven months pregnant. Sex. I can't make you pregnant when you're already pregnant. That's over with. <laughs> Pregnant? That's I was already pregnant. Pre I was pregnant in February. I was pregnant in February. We exactly. slept together February, March, yeah. and May. But, Miss Bailey, respectfully, you slept with him and two other men, so do you blame him for not being 
sure or no you did don't you know that. at that time her. mr green that she had slept with two other men as well yes i did your honor i did she told i mean like uh she tells me stuff that they think is going to make me mad i just let it go over my head get what i want and move on to the next okay so in your statement to the court you said throughout your relationship and your marriage you were having unprotected sex with Ms. Bailey, and yet she never got pregnant. Never got pregnant. So that fuels your doubts. It, it really does, because, and we used to lay in the bed and we used to fi try to find reasons why she couldn't get pregnant. After a while, you know, we talked on the phone several times. She was trying to get me to, you know, buy into the fact that this was my child. So she sent me a picture. He had red hair. He's like almost white. He like- And he still man, do. Come and on. he still do. Hey, look. I, I did some research. Little boy. I did some research. Let me see your research. I'm I'm glad we finally get into some okay. evidence. Thank you, in here. thank you, thank you, thank you. And what you're about Woo! to read is about the state that you know, unless the child is a bino between two African American people, there's no way that child should come out that light with red hair. Why? There's Why? no way. Do you know your whole family history? Do you Yana, know if any red hair are in my family? Because she bought it. His hair is red because somebody else gave it to him. Two different color reds. Two different colors. So this is your evidence that pertains to the fact you don't believe that you or her together could produce a child with red hair. Not only that, Your Honor, he was born a month and a half early. You claim when you all kind of reconnected, I'll say that, you thought she was already pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. So when the baby came out a month early, you said to yourself, that ain't my this baby. adds up to it being the other man's baby, not mine. Now, Ms. Bailey, how do you explain this? Your child was just born early, or were you sleeping with the other two men without protection as well? Well, Your Honor, yes, I was. I knew what I was getting into. I knew I was ovulating. I knew what we was gonna lead to, but I figured since we, I never did get pregnant between the three years we was together, that I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get pregnant then. Yeah. But when I asked him, would he believe if it was his baby, he told me yes. If you, if you wouldn't have had no doubt about it, you shouldn't have told me, period. You should have right. said yes, and we could have left it at that. You don't have to know if that's your baby or not. He don't need to know his father for real. Well, Why would then... you say that? Because that's, just, that's exactly how he treated my son. Like, he just don't care about him. But, Your Honor, I do have a calendar that I, I have. I would like my, to see um, that. Uh, my fertility. That tells you the day that we, me and him step down, slept together and the other two. So days. this is your iPad that has your app. In red are the dates of your cycle. Mm -hmm. And then in pink, on the 25th, is the day this particular app says you would have ovulated. Okay. Yes. So now, going forward, these are the dates that you were having sex with the various men you had sex with. Mm -hmm. On the fourth, which is outlined in blue, you had sex with potential father number one, without protection. Then the week of your cycle is the next week. The following week, you have sex on the 18th and the 19th with potential father number two. Then we get to the week where the ovulation date is outlined in pink, that's the yes. 25th, and you just so happen to have sex with Mr. Green on that date. Correct. And the date before. Correct. No protection used. None whatsoever. So based upon this app and the calculations you've done here and the app does for you, it looks to you like Mr. Green would be the father of your child. Exactly, Your Honor. Couldn't be, it was too crowded in there. My sperm couldn't do nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like I didn't hear that. And I'm gonna pretend like I didn't either. Moving on, on, moving on. When we first met, um, we got into a relationship. First of all, he was already with a woman, okay? He broke up with her to be with me. And then when Thanksgiving came along, he told me he was staying with his sister. So he asked me to spend a weekend with him, which I did. And I walked in, and he took me into another woman's house. Not his sister's house, another woman's house. So from then point on, I shouldn't have stopped. I should have stopped messing with him then. Because I disrespectful can you be like in another woman in someone else's house? I should have stopped then. I should have stopped. And I don't understand he can do me like this, because right now I still love you. Even you treat me like dirt right now. I still love you. I still got love for you. But that's your baby. And you going to take care of him. Point blank, period.
that really sounds touching. That really sounds touching. I don't believe anything she said because behind. So you didn't take me to another woman's house. Well, yeah. Did I mean, you? That is true. Okay. But I didn't and when, take my wife. And when a family member so passed Mr. Green, her family, she wasn't, wife. wasn't I right there with you? Look, she wasn't at her wife. house. Mr. Green. Yes, Your Honor. Why is it everything this woman says you say is a lie, and then in your next sentence it confirms what no. she said is true? Understand. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. So, understand. But she allowed it. She accepted it. Like she said, she could have left. After the fact, too. I was already there, Your Honor. Uh, he left. Uh, he, he she left, left in the car. You could. Miss Bailey, let's really be honest, because. Although I can see that you are very hurt by Mr. Green's actions, it seems to me that you are most disappointed in your own. And you know your actions <laughs> have now affected baby Lawrence. Yep, because I'm taking care of him by myself, along with two other kids. And this beautiful baby does deserve to know who his father is and to have the love of his father. Yes, so has Mr. Green helped you at all with Lawrence? I mean, he bought two boxes of diapers. Two and boxes. And gave him hand-me-down clothes. And he gave you some clothes. Nothing wrong with some hand-me-downs. No, There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. As long as they're clean, <laughs> they work. Babies grow fast. Yeah, they, he, and especially him. Right, right. And so, Mr. Green, what is your relationship with baby Lawrence? Do you have one? Well, uh, I, uh, honestly, like I said, it is a, you know, I could be his father because we use unprotected sex, but you just can't put it on me after after you know and I know what you do. But um, you know, I'm real good to my kids. You know, I just lost my daughter, Jasmine Green. She died in the daycare van in 2011. That was so actually sorry. our demise. That was at the point where our marriage just I, yeah, I, I y'all packed he up. Yeah, end up and leaving I, and, and going left. back to his ex. I, I, I became while we were still I married. became in protective mode. I needed to protect everything else that did belong to me. So honestly, and I, Honor, I figured that's why you have a wife, if right, Yana? Belongs to me. He will be in that circle also. But I can't give her respect for just calling me whenever she comes from Alabama and say, "If you want to see Lawrence, bring diapers and wipes." Your Honor, that's not true because from um, I don't need anything from you. He has diapers and wipes that I provide for him. Okay. Oh, so so, so I didn't if, never if see. He so I anything... never bought diapers and wipes for that boy. All right, but let's let's Your be Honor... let's be clear, just so you understand. Your legal right to see a child that is your child is separate and independent of the obligation to provide. So, um, the mother of the child, or if it's the father of the child that has custody, can't just say to you, you can't see him unless you bring him something. That's not the law. So, that's not the case. Are any of the other men helping you with the child? Do they think that Lawrence could potentially be their son as well, and no, they're Honor. stepping up the plate to do something? No, Your Honor. None of them? No. So, you stand in open court and you say, despite everything he's done to you, you still love him and you still have love for him. Yeah. Do you want him back? Do you want a relationship with him? Almost, because you're on No, I do not. I don't want him back. And no, I don't want a relationship. I just want him and Lawrence to have a relationship. Was that that love when you say, no matter what you've done to me, I still love you, I still have love for you, do you think that has any connection to you maybe suggesting or believing that he's the father of your child is because at a time you really still wanted a connection to him? No, it's just because my feelings never changed for him. Like, that's the reason why I left, to get away from him, to stop these feelings I have for him, to stop being in love with him, period. But you called me and have sex with him. <laughs> you keep coming back um, to me. Must be good. Um, it ain't that good. It ain't that good. It is what it is, John. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> Jerome, give me the results. <laughs> you know, a part of me knows that she tried to trap you because the dates line up and she got a calendar. <laughs> the other part of me is just so annoyed because you just got a joke for everything. I don't like how you downgrade her. I don't know. It's something about the way you act towards her that annoys me. No, I was tortured. And it's because <laughs> what I think you do know, you're not a dumb man. So what I think you do know is that she does love you. And you keep saying she offered herself and she keep calling you and she keep, she just yelled out in open court she loved you. Of course she gonna keep calling you. The problem is if you don't love her, 
stop showing up. <laughs> because ultimately, you just add fuel to her fire and make her think there's a hope. And that's where men and women have to get a clue. You think you just going over there for sex, but when she has sex with you, she thinks that there's another opportunity for you all to figure this thing out and maybe work things out. Are we ready for the results? Yes, Your Honor. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Bailey versus Green pertaining to nine-month-old Lawrence Bailey, Mr. Green, you are Lawrence's father. In the infamous words of Mr. Green, it is what it is. What it is. <laughs> And like we used to say in Detroit, so what's it gonna be? <laughs> Meaning, are you gonna step up to the plate and be a father to your son? Yes, Your Honor. Do the right thing? Yes, yeah, she know I will. Now, this court does have resources for you. We're gonna offer those resources so you can maybe start sorting through and figure out how to set up those boundaries, how to engage in respectful dialogue, and, and figure out how to do this together. Are we clear? Yes, I believe you can do it. And he's worth it. <laughs> right? Yes. All right, court is adjourned. Ms. Poyer, you have brought your son to court today and you are suing him for $5,000 in unpaid rent and utility bills. You say in your statement that you feel it is time for him to start acting like a man before he becomes a father. You are here today to make him face his responsibilities as an adult. Mr. Poyer, you argue that your mother bullied you, treated you like a maid, talked down to you, and then when you finally fought back, you ended up having to move out of your family home. You say you are ready for fatherhood, but feel you need to resolve the bad blood between the two of you before you can move on with your own life. Ms. Poyer, what led to you kicking your son out of the house? My son, he's lazy. I feel that he's lazy, okay? I'm your mother. I try to do the best that I can for you. Um, you cannot just want to lay around, not want to do anything, not want to help me, you know, take care of the household or help me pay any bills. You cannot talk to me like I'm one of your friends in the street. I hear what she's saying as far as it's not what you say, it's how you say it, but she's the total last person that should even be saying something like that because the way she speaks to me all the time is just really contradicting to that statement. Like, she talks down to me, she yells, she talks to me with sarcasm, you know what I'm saying? And then she comes at me with this, I'm lazy, but you're the same person who'll get off the train on your way home and walk past five stores and come upstairs and go, you go to the store and buy me a soda and a bag of chips. Didn't you just walk past the store? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't get it. I, I, I don't... Like, in my brain, it doesn't add up, but I'm the lazy one. I'm the lazy one, but you don't want to do anything. You want me to cook all the meals. You want me to clean the house constantly by myself. You don't want to help me do that. Excuse me. When I get home at 7 or 8 o'clock at night time, you get cooked, you get clean. Okay, yes, I know my attitude. It's, 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 it's challenging. Idea. It's challenging, yes. <laughs> I'll say that. Yes, you know, but I had to do this by myself by myself. I was mom and I was dad. When you were living with her, were you contributing to Honestly, the best of I your ability? I felt that I was. I did exactly what I told her I was gonna do. I would give you $50 out of my check every week because I'm only making $150 a week. So when my seasonal job ended, so did my income. You understand what I'm saying? So you feel like she's unnecessarily hard on you. Right, but it became less of, we're gonna do this together to more of you do, you do, you do, you do, and I'm just gonna sit back. I'm gonna sit back. And it got to a point where I started to feel away about certain little things, such as I'm at home and I'm watching television and you walk in the house, and now you don't wanna watch what I'm watching, so I have to stop everything I'm doing and focus on what you wanna watch on television. Yeah, you do! Yeah, How is that you. fair? Yeah, you Thank do! You. How is that fair? Yeah, you do! I, 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 I'm gonna make a ruling right now. When your mother works all 
day and you've been at home watching TV, when your mother comes home, if she wants to see something on television in her house that she works to pay for, that remote goes to her hand and she watches what she wants to watch. <laughs> Ruling is in. <laughs> this court is about teaching men to be better fathers, men to be better men, and for cycles to be broken. <laughs> Meaning, you want to prepare him to be a man. You feeling like he's just not doing his best. Tell me what, okay, your, what listen, your fears are. I don't want Ryan to keep making some of the same, same mistakes that I made. Okay, I got high. I ran the street. But there comes a point in your life when it's time to say enough is enough. What is he doing wrong? I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I get up at 5 o'clock, being out at 10 o'clock. No, you want to come in here ringing my doorbell 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. That's disrespectful. I get, what, two hours sleep? Mm -hmm. But that's the goal. The goal to try to provide for us to have somewhere to stay, mm -hmm. a stable home. Her mentality when I speak to her about it is, well, I'm your mother and this is how it is and there's nothing you can do about it. That's I'm not 24 true. years old That's not and I'm true. holding down a job and I'm giving you what I can't afford to give you. I don't have a key to this apartment where I'm staying at, but I'm giving you money so I can stay there. At 24, I should have a key. You two definitely are having issues communicating, to say the least. Now, maybe this is because you two have not spoken or seen one another in almost three years because of this dispute? Yes, ma'am. Three years? Miss mm -hmm. Poirier, you look emotional. I love my son. I love my son to death. All I want is for my child just to grow up. Grow up. But then it was time to come in here. Mom, I didn't get paid this, that, and the other. But yet, still, you going in there to find your little roll up and your little to do your business. Mm-hmm. All right, on. so this brings us to the specifics of your suit. You say he did not contribute. You say you have cable bills. I have cable bill. I have rent. Rent. Did you bring that to the court today? Yes, ma'am, I did. Jerome, will you hand me that proof from Ms. Poyer? So now, Ms. Poyer, I need you to tell the court specifically what you're suing for. Okay, I'm suing him for $5,000 because that's all I can sue him for. But actually, Your Honor, it's like $8,357.28. How did you get to this number? Well, my rent, Your Honor, is $1,200 okay. a month. The cable bill is like one fifty nine. dollars So within a year, the rent is like $7,000 and some change, and the cable bill is $1,000. So that adds up to $8,357.28. never agreed to pay half of anything, For ever. the amount of time that he lived ever. with you. He lived with me like four years and a half before he had to go. Mr. Poor, you're shaking your head no. Did you agree to give her $50 a week, or did you agree to give her $50 a week when you could afford to? When I could afford to. It's not $50 when I can afford to. I can't tell her, the rent man, I'm only going to give you $600. Yeah, but you also put your name afford. on paper for the rent man. Right. You signed a contract with the rent man. I didn't sign a contract with you. I'm only going to give you $100 because this is what I can afford. And again. Because I only make this amount of money every And you way. sign a lease when you do that that says my rent is so it forth and so matter. forth and I'm going to See, give you, you so forth and so forth. I never did that with you. So when he was working working this job, he was to give you $50 a week. A week. How long did he work this job? Two and a half weeks. <laughs> did you we just say it, two and a half weeks? You don't get a seasonal job for two and a half weeks. When you work at a store for a season, that season is always two months and longer. Yeah. I don't know where she got this two and a half weeks from. If you can find me a job that's going to hire me so, in a store a for two and a half weeks, How long did you work this job where you were supposed to pay her $50 a week? I was at this job for, for almost three months before the season ended. So almost three, so you were with almost three months, yes, which is 12 weeks. Yes, ma'am. And how much of that did he pay during this time? Maybe $200. Is that is that about how much you paid her, Mr. Poyer? I would say it was a little more than that, but I would say, in honesty, it'd probably be more around like 300, 350, honestly. 
Ms. Poyer, you have a witness. I just want to briefly hear from you. Good morning, Judge Good Lauren. morning. What's I'm your name? Natasha. I'm Rosalind's sister, and yes. I'm Ryan's fine. Yes. Um, my main concern, uh, the reason why I'm here, is because he's going out smoking marijuana. He's jumping turnstiles, getting arrested. Stupid stuff like that. The worst thing I've ever done was smoke weed and hop a turnstile when I was 17. Leave it alone. Let it die already. Okay. Let it die. I don't understand. Uh, Yana, I'm glad that he said that. Okay, smoking marijuana, that doesn't go out of your system right away. So how are you gonna get a job if your system is dirty? That's, That's a good number question, one. Mr. Poyer. Every job in the world doesn't require a drug test, Your Honor. So you're looking for those? Every, I, I've, I've had numerous ones of them. And then who's gonna hire him? Because once they do a background check, you only work in two weeks. Yeah, or you no. just you just got arrested for jumping the turnstile. Okay, you serious. both feel that Again. his girlfriend, his current girlfriend, is a bad influence. Jerome, will you please escort her into the courtroom? You both feel that his girlfriend, his current girlfriend, is a bad influence. Jerome, will you please escort her into the courtroom? Yana, may I say something? Yes, you may. Okay. Ryan was never a bad kid. Mm -hmm. Him and his, Ryan and, and Rosalind used to be very close. Mm -hmm. He used to be up on under outside. Rosalind. She spoiled him to death. I don't know where his misbehaving came from. But then one day he comes to my house and his girlfriend's with him. Who is this? Okay. Where does she come from? And that would be Ms. Luciano. Margaret. Yes. Ms. Luciano. Yes. Yes. Thank you for coming no today. Problem. You felt that this bad behavior was a result maybe of Bad it started influence. making sense, yes, because she comes, yeah, that's, that's she has true. black nail polish on, piercing. And that black nail polish was sure enough make you act yes, out. Yes, that's not how you make it. Black dress gothic. Where would you work in a cemetery? Like, who, who is this? <laughs> Started putting two and two together. He has tattoos, she has tattoos. They have piercings, she has piercings. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, Miss Luciana? What is going on? I, I want you to tell me. I sport. disagree with everything that's going on right tell here. First of all, we both have a job. We work at the same place. We, oh, you do? Where? Yeah. We have, yeah. Yeah. Tell me where. I work I like at a marketing Show research. me a pay stub. I, I have many of pay stubs. Where's your W-2? Research in the in the borough that we live in, okay. and we we both we pay rent together. Okay. We both clean. We cook. He's not. He goes. Do you he, have a I, ticket account? I have a. Do yes, you have a yes, I account? do. And Chase, you want to? We could go to Chase, and I'll show you my my, okay. my account. Okay. And what do you make a week? I make about one hundred fifty dollars a week. One hundred and fifty dollars a week. I have a question. Okay. Now, y'all yeah, make one hundred and fifty dollars a week. From what I gather, you live with your mother. Yes. You pay your mother? Yes. He pays your mother? Yes. Oh! So why he can't pay her? Did you just say to this court that you're working and you are paying her mother I am paying a right now. steady amount of I money? I have a steady job now, so I can afford to a pay steady, a steady amount uh, no, no, of money. No, 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 no. Because you stated to this court when you worked for almost three months, which is 12 weeks, that you only paid, in your estimation, $300. So that means you didn't pay her for the amount of weeks you owed her for when you were working, period. But the situation I'm in now is totally different compared to that. Like, she's not telling y'all that at a point she put me on the street, physically on the street. Get out of my house. I don't care where you live. I don't care where you sleep. I don't care what you eat. Okay, you should have been put out. Period. Period. You should have been but put out. But now she's worried about what's going on with me. How can you be worried about somebody that you put in a negative situation? No, How no, can no, you no, put no. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to explain it to you right now because obviously you can't accept it from your mother. You're a grown man living like a kid. You should have been out a long time ago. You couldn't, you wouldn't have been able to live in my house growing up if you didn't keep a steady job. Now, what is very interesting to this court, and I see to your family as well, when you leave the nest, suddenly you begin to live up to your potential. You get a job. You begin to get money paid regularly. You have a checking account. Well, what your mother is saying is, why couldn't you do that for me? to help me. That's it. And you're doing what you should be doing and mom
time for that, you have to at least say, this is a good thing. I know you may feel slighted, but you would feel even worse if your son was over at this woman's mother's house laying up on the TV talking about, I hope she don't come in and ask me to turn a channel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yes, be honest. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay. You're absolutely right. Yes, I give him, I give him all his props for doing what he needs to do. But right now, my thing is to, may I, may I? Yes. You need to make a foundation to bring children into this world. Because the more that you live with somebody else, the harder you're going to struggle. And that's fine, and I understand that. You're going to... In the time that you haven't spoke to me, and in the time that I felt like, you know what, I got put in a situation where I'm on the street, literally physically sleeping on the street and worrying about where I was going to eat, where I was going to shower, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this because I need to do this. And you know what? When I decided I got this job and this job hired me and I've been working here for almost a year now, I said to myself, you know, I'm proud of myself because I'm doing something that I never did before. And it's really messed up. My mom is not here to be a part of this. And it's really messed up. I feel the way I feel towards my mom for everything that's been going on. But I still love you. If, if I disrespected you, I, I apologize. You know what? I'm not even going to offer an explanation. I would be the woman and say, I apologize. That's all I want. That's all I ever want. That's all I ever want. Mr. Poyer, Ms. Poyer, what I understand from you, Ms. Poyer, is that you were doing the best you could by him. And Mr. Poyer, she wants you to be a man, and I think right now she's seeing today that you are becoming that man. You got to give her credit and say, this is what my mom was telling me I could do. Give her that credit. So with that said, Ms. Poyer, I have to ask you at this point that you see that he is starting to turn his life around. I will offer you the option of dropping your suit against your son, or if you'd like to continue with it, I will rule on it. I still want him to pay. I will offer you the option of dropping your suit against your son, or if you'd like to continue with it, I will rule on it. I still want him to pay, but you know what? To push you out the nest, for you to find your wings, at the end of the day, I did my job. Yes, yes, Hello. you did, Miss Boyer, you did. And I love you. Love you too. I love you. I love you. I love you. I miss laughing with you. I miss crying with you when you need to cry. I miss holding you. You know how I used to play with your ear? I miss all of that. <laughs> hey, remember, remember, I want you to do something. May I, may I hug him, please? You absolutely can. Do you remember that? <laughs> I love you so much. This is what I most remember. Give me some nose. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. So, Miss Poyer, with that said, what is your decision? I'll let this one ride. I thought so. I I'll do the honors for you. Thank you.